assembling together with other believers to encourage one another to lift each other up to bless each other so i just pray you'll just help us to be what you've called us to be the witness in a lost world in jesus name i pray amen how many feel like you're going through a battle all right should be a lot of hand we're going through a battle but we have the victory and why do we have the victory through who Jesus. Amen. You can say it louder if you want. Jesus. Jesus. We have the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he has somewhere special for us planned. You realize that? He has a special place for us. So what do we have to fear in life but fear itself? Isn't that what the, you, they used to say a long time ago? We have nothing to fear but fear itself. As long as we know who we are in the Lord, we can have the peace that passes all understanding. And I look around, we should all, now you can't tell about all, but we should all have a smile on our face or a twinkle in the eye. How about that? A twinkle in the eye because you know who you are in the Lord. How many knows who you are in the Lord? Amen. Amen. We have to know who we are. And if you do not know who you are, what do you do? You go to the Word and just read John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We have everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And has, has anybody stumbled and fall, fallen down along the way? Yes. But guess what? We have the advocate, our Lord and Savior. All we got to do is say, man, I did it again and again and again and again. Will you forgive me? And he says, as far as the east is from the west, I will forgive you. But then he says, go sin no more. If not, it does not give us a, an excuse to go sin because we can ask for forgiveness. No, we ask for give forgiveness that we do not want to go and sin no more. We want to be Christ-like. We want to be just like Him. And we're going to start over in Psalms chapter, Psalms 119, verse 105. And so many times we forget this in our lives. Who is the one that leads, guides, and directs us? The Holy Spirit. 
He loves us. God loved us so much. He sent the Comforter, Jesus Christ. He sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And when the old enemy, does anybody have the enemy play with your mind once in a while? There you go. Yes. Amen. Wrong the, the, huh? Oh. Wrong play. Wrong. Okay. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 105. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. How many is on a journey? We all are. Whether you like it or not, you're on a journey. And the question is, where will you finish at the end of that journey? Heaven or hell? And it's a choice. Nobody's going to send you to hell, and nobody can send you to hell but you yourself. It's a choice. In verse 110, it says, The wicked had laid a snare for me, yet I strayed not from the precepts. God's word, 112, it says, I have inclined my heart to perform thy statues always, even unto the end. Man, when you accept Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, it is not just for today. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. We are born again. We know Jesus is our personal Lord and Savior, and we're heaven bound. And what do we do? We do not. It says, go and sin no more. Go and be Christ-like. Share the love of Jesus with other people. And I hope and pray that everybody invited at least one person today. Whether they show up or not, that's on them. But are you about your father's business? And as I've said, and I'll say over and over again, we're not here to fill a church up. We're here to see lives change for the kingdom of heaven. And if a person comes down these aisles and gives their life to Christ, and they feel led to go somewhere else, hallelujah, we've accomplished what we're supposed to do. God says he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory, and God has supplied our needs. Day after day, month after month, year after year, he has supplied our needs in so many different ways. All we got to do is stay focused on what we're supposed to do. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Why do we do that? Because he loved us. Do we love others as much as he loved us? Or do we look at people and say, well, they deserve everything they're getting. Send them to hell. And if we had that attitude, we'll pick on my brother just a little bit. Where would you be today? We do not know. I believe God would have made another way because he loved you so much. But he chose to speak Harley and I and we saw him and his friends out there and we have led to stop. And be there willing to do what God has said to do. God loves each and every person on the face of the earth just as much as he loves you and he loves me. His will is none would be lost. Not a single person on the face of the earth. We want revival? Go start sharing Jesus with people and see people's lives change and you'll see revival in our country. One begets another, which begets another and another and another. What are we doing with our lives? Are we just throwing it away? I go to church on Sunday. I don't want to hear about the next six days of the week. Have you ever heard that in your life? Yes, there's some heads going, yes. I have too. Tell me about it on Sunday. Leave me alone the rest of the week. I'm not just saved on Sunday. I'm saved seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And we're called to what? Be witnesses for him. We're going to jump over on the Matthew. Chapter 4, verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light. And to them which sat, which sat in the regions of, and shadows of death, light is sprung up. We are the light, people. Understand, at work we are the light. 
My brother, he shares his testimony with me in detail sometimes how God is working in his life. He knows who has his back. God does. God has each and every one of our backs. All we have to do is be what he's called us to be, the witness. In verse 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What message do we have? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's the same message then as it is now. We share with others. We do not twist our arms. If it would do good, we'd gang up on everybody that we could gang up on and we'd twist our arms, feet, and toes. If it'd make a difference and they accept Jesus Christ, but it doesn't work that way. It's personal, one-on-one -on -one with God. But we are to be His witness. We are to go and tell. We're to allow that light to shine through us. If my light shines on a Sunday and not six days of the, during the six days of the week, I miss the mark. Do you look for the opportunity to share Jesus? Sometimes it'll turn around and bite you. Have you had that experience? You share it with Jesus, somebody turns around and bites you. But we know who we are. They can't bite us. They can say all manner of evil against us they want. But as long as they're using our name, and somebody said, well, I'm going to go check this out. Well, what about so and so? Oh, yeah, I'm sharing Jesus with them. Well, let them, doesn't matter. Let's pray for them. Pray for those who despitefully use you. So many times we got so many chips on our shoulders, we don't know what to do, and we got such a weight we're carrying, we don't know what to do. And the Bible tells us, take it to the foot of the cross and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Know who you are in the Lord. So many times we forget. When we're at church, we're around brothers and sisters in Christ. It's okay to smile. But when you're not around their brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is not gloom and despair. Nowhere in the Bible says that. We should be the happiest of all. And I'm seeing more and more smiles. Hallelujah. We can't tell on the back row for smiling or not, though. But that's okay. I love each and every one of them, and they know that, and they know I'll pick on them. And they know what I do in the love of Jesus Christ, okay? Who are we? I tell you what. Thank you, brother. I got a thumbs up. Hallelujah. We know who we are in the Lord. Death has no sting in our lives. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. What do we have to fear? But fear itself, as I said once. Quit fearing everything that's coming your way. Start looking at it as an opportunity to share Jesus. Share His love. Verse, chapter 15, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Realize that? We all. How many like salt? Everybody probably likes salt, but some people can't eat salt. But the Bible says we are the salt. We are the woman's call to make a difference. He said, but if the salt has lost its savor, or its flavor, or its taste, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. That is Matthew 5. 13, I just did 14. Chapter 5, verse 13. And we just finished 13, and we're going on down. Okay? And so, if you are the salt, and you have no taste of salt, have you ever put little pebbles in your mouth? I know you have because you've been kids at one time. Every kid put the pebbles in their mouth. Some people, they, some of them, I know, some of them even put dirt in their mouth and eat it. I had a cousin that did that. He craved dirt. Probably something he, he had a need in his body, but he's always eating dirt. He didn't care where he picked it up. People, 
We love people. Sometimes we call them the scourge of the earth. Sometimes we call them dirt. We call them all kinds of things. But God has called us to them to share the love of Jesus. In verse 14 it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. People, is your light so shining that people come up and say, there's something different about you. What is that? Does anybody ever have that somebody say that? Uh-oh, you better get in line. You better start speaking up then. I don't see no hands at all. A couple nod, yes, that's good. That's a start. Allow your light to shine. People need to know that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. What is the difference with you? You don't cuss when you cut yourself. You don't cuss when you get hurt. You don't do all these things that everybody else is doing. It's not all about you. It's all about Jesus. Allow your light to shine. And that light is Jesus Christ shining through us. Do you smile once in a while? Does a pastor have to draw it out of you on a Sunday? Yes, Jim, nodding on that, yeah. On a Sunday and the rest of the week, it's gloom and despair. I'm not saying you're lost, but you just, man, we should be drawing people to us. And you say, well, I don't sound right because us will tell them about Jesus. Us will invite them to church. Us will look for the best thing for them in their life to encourage them and help them. But it's still upon that individual. Know who you are in the Lord. Smile. All right. I know, smiling, it takes more effort than a frown. Okay. But that's okay. Bit verse 15, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. We're all in the house. Our light should be shining that each and every one of us will see Jesus shining through us. Not us. Him. Because on judgment day each and every one of us is going to stand in the same line. But we want to hear the same thing. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Verse 10, it said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's all about our Father. It's all about Him. We are glorifying our Father. Better not ask that question. Too many hands might go up. Okay, never mind. Hold that thought. Yes, sir. Verse 18, For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Not one thing is changed in the word of God until everything is accomplished. And what is it being accomplished? Us sharing Jesus with people. Us praying one for another. Us being a family of God that loves each and every one of us. I might have some bad habits. Okay. I hurt myself all the time, but I got my doctor in the back. I hurt myself all the time. I don't do it intentionally, but it seems like I do. But it's not going to send me to hell. I have no bad habits that God would be pleased of. I have the habits that glorify my Lord and Savior. Am I perfect? No. We crucified Him, but we strive to be like Him. Your pastor is not your example. Jesus Christ is your example. Who do you have your eyes fixed upon? And I've seen so many churches fall apart, disperse, and go different ways. Because of the pastor did something crazy. They put their eyes on the wrong thing. Put your eyes on Jesus. And if you need to get rid of the pastor, just let him go on down the road. Do not 
destroy the body of Christ which we are. Love Jesus. Love him. Love him. Luke chapter 5 verse 20 This is Jesus speaking. He says, And when they saw their faith, He said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. When God sees your faith, when you ask Him for Him to forgive you of your sins, and this is talking about the lame man, but when, when God is there for you, he talks to you on a regular basis. How many have heard the Word of God in your mind sometime this week? I'll just raise both hands. And I'll, okay. Amen. He does. Either you know better than that, or you shouldn't do that, or go and do this. Whatever it might be, let's do what He's called us to do. Even if it sounds crazy. We got a whole back row back there. And because God one day spoke to me to do something that was crazy to a world, I did as the Lord said. And because I did as the Lord said, God started touching lives. Why? Because I did what God said. To the world, they said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why would you do something like that? Because God said, do it. Where do, we, um, where do we mess up in life? When God says, do it, and you know it is God, and you say, well, maybe tomorrow or next week. I'm kind of busy today. It says, do not put off to tomorrow what we know is right that we should do today. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Not once the Bible says, well, ponder it for a while. Think about it for a while. No, he says, listen to that still, small voice. The Holy Spirit says, go, tell, share, and do. And when you do that, you will see lives change, not because of me, but because of what God wants to do in people's lives. Luke chapter 6 verse 20 he says and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said bless ye bless be ye poor for yours is the kingdom of God he's talking to his disciples they was out there working trying to make a living trying to feed their family and God blessed them because they left all and turned and followed Jesus. And he says, And, he, and he, left, he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor. They were poor. His disciples were poor. But they left what they had, their boats and their nets and the fish that they caught. They left them to follow Jesus. All he's asking is, Come, follow me. And listen to that still, small voice when he talks to you. Verse 21, it says, Blessed are ye that humble, hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall persecute you from their from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. When people are talking about you and ridiculing you and saying all kinds of things about you, what's he saying? Hey, somebody's noticed there's something different about me. Hallelujah. We can smile. My neighbor doesn't like me. Why? Because I start my car up at 9 o'clock in the morning so I can get to church. And that when they're wanting to sleep, hey, they're seeing a difference. People, it's time for us to change. 
And he says, verse 23, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. Have you, have you been leaping for joy, excited about what God is doing? When the doctor says, man, you've got a day or two left, you said, you're not my doctor. i got the best physician in the whole wide world, my Lord and Savior, and he's not going to take me home until he's ready for me, Till he feels like my mission here on earth is accomplished. And when my life mission for myself on here on earth is accomplished, he might just take me throughout the week. Where's the pastor today? Uh, he went home to be with the Lord. Haven't you heard? We do not know the day nor the hour, but we don't have to worry about the day or the hour. Who wants to live to be 120 years old? That was a ripe old age in the Bible. Can you imagine how you're going to feel if you're hobbling around now? How are you going to feel at 120? You might be in a wheelchair and somebody rolling you around. And I hope you're preaching the gospel. Laying there on your bed, preaching, saying, God loves you. He loves me. And he doesn't look like it. Well, he does. This is just a shell I'm using until I get to heaven to where I get my new body. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. He says, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Man, it's going to be awesome if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, it's going to be judgment. But it's going to be awesome. And I kid all my whole life. I don't know why I do that. About the mountain of popcorn and a mountain of ice cream. And which one am I going to jump in first? I was doing that when I was a kid. I don't know why. Maybe because I eat popcorn and ice cream then too. Yeah, sometimes we're a little crazy. <laughs> I had my tonsils taken out, and they said, what do you want? I want popcorn. Uh, you're supposed to drink a soda. No, I want popcorn. Well, you got to take the little whole things off, then you can eat it. I got popcorn. My mom loved me. Okay. He says, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers did their fathers unto the prophets. They killed the prophets. They did all kinds of things. But we know who we are in the Lord. That last thing sounds silly, but it's true. I was 9, 10 years old, something, 10, 11, whenever you had your tonsils out then, eating popcorn. That's okay. Didn't kill me. I'm still here. You say, I know, I can hear you. Okay. God has it in control. He has one thing for us. The journey that is set before each and every one of us. And the journey that you're going through, what's awesome about it, you got a family of God. All you got to do is say, man, I'm going through this. I need, I need some prayer. You're going to have prayer going before you. You're going to have people encouraging you. You're going to have people standing with you. Know who you are in the Lord. So many people, when they walk out them doors, they forget who they are. Allow your light so shine that others see Jesus in you. And what should be the, some of the first things people ask you? There's something different about you. You're not the same person I used to know. Are you still doing these things? No, nope. quit that a long time ago. How come? Because one day I got on my face before God and I said, Father, forgive me. And I confessed my sins to Him. And the Bible says He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And when He forgives us of our, forgives us of our sins, He says, Go and sin no more. That is love. That is love. <clears throat> when they beat him, when they whipped him, he could have called 10,000 angels. But he died alone for you and me. He's not on that cross no more. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me. He says, Father, 
I know what they're going through. I was there. And He gives us grace and mercy, and He puts people in our paths. You say, man, I was lucky that I run into that person. Luck has nothing to do with the journey of life. God has preordained the journey that we're on and the lives that we touch. God is in the middle of it. Will all of them follow all the way? No. But it's a choice they have to make and it's on them once we share. People, put a smile on your face and see how many people say, well, what are you so happy about? I challenge you to, I challenge you this week, every time you think about it, put a smile on your face and I hope and pray next Sunday you'll come back with a testimony how God has used that smile because who puts a smile on our face? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the smile that stays, the peace that we have in our hearts, the love that we have for Him because He loved us. Are you ready for a change? Has everybody enjoyed last week to its fullest? Or do you feel like, well, I had to work. Well, praise the Lord you got a job. Well, I had to drive. Well, praise the Lord you got transportation. Start praising the Lord for what He's doing instead of gloom and despair. Well, I don't have a new car. Well, that guy down the street doesn't either. But you got one that's running. His is broke. Praise the Lord. I don't have no car, but my neighbor said he'd take me wherever I wanted to go. Praise the Lord. We got so many praises in our lives that we do not even think about one of them. Oh, enemy sticks his head up and we feel like, man, we're defeated. We are not defeated because Jesus Christ says, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. He's right there with us. Put a smile on your face. And when I ask next week, if I don't ask, say, hey, Pastor, are you supposed to ask us something? Then you'll have to remind me, okay? Hey, but I know who I am in the Lord. It's all good. It's all good. Have peace. I'm going to start the back and go across. How many smile? Yes, 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 yes. Yep, yep, no, I, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Almost, almost. Oh, there we go. Hallelujah. See, God wants the best. Even a little smile, put a laugh on people's hearts. Isn't that awesome? That's just the light shining just a little bit. What's going to happen if you really let your light shine? They're going to say, something's wrong with you. What are you drinking, man? I'm not drinking nothing. I'm reading the Word of God. Know who you are. It's time for Christians to stand up and be counted on this side of glory. Share with people. When you see somebody in gloom and despair, just ask them, can I pray for you? If they say no, that's okay. Know who you are. Time for a change. Shall we all stand? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to your house not to destroy, but to build up. To build up your people. Get them ready for battle. And you said the battle is not ours, it's yours. And we follow you. As you said in your word, onward Christian soldiers marching ass to war with the cross of Jesus going on before so, Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to realize we have a mission. Each and every one that's here today has a mission in life to see lives change for the kingdom of God. That we can hear them great words, well done, my good and faithful servant. So just touch us this day, Lord, that we can be what you call us to be. Proud of who we are, not ashamed, and proud of our Lord and Savior that paid it all for us. So help us to be the witness that you've called us to be in the Word. You told each and every one of us, go and tell. We have no excuse. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.